Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be colouring another picture out of Phantomorphia by Kirby Rosanis, but this time I'm using a few different techniques. I'm starting off with pan pastels. This is my first time using pan pastels, which I bought only recently, and you can check out my pan pastel unboxing video, which I'll link up in the top right corner. So I started off in the middle with the lightest Hansa yellow, and then I blended it in with the slightly more orange diarolide yellow. And here I'm going in with orange, <laughs> which does not have any other name, it's just orange. And I am using the Pan Pastel soft tools to blend it as much as possible. I'm definitely not an expert with these yet, so my blending isn't totally seamless, but I did as best I could, considering this was my first time. I then went in with the permanent red, and that is a much brighter colour than the orange, so there was quite a line in between the two, and I did my best to blur as much as possible the orange and the red, but there is a little bit of a tide line there, unfortunately. <laughs> I will get better at this as I go along, I certainly hope so. <laughs> I had some real fun using this big fat soft brush thing in these tiny little nooks and crannies but I forget it didn't really matter too much if they blurred over the lines because I'll just go over them again so you can see me there trying to blend it in a bit and then I went in with the magenta I'm not too sure if this was the greatest idea but I persevered because I'd put it on there and I figure I may as well keep going so this is a much pinker colour, purplier colour than the red. We've gone from the warm permanent red to a much cooler magenta. And then there's me just filling up those tiny little bits. I didn't do too badly with it considering how blunt the tool was. And the next one I went in was the violet and this was really really dark maybe a bit too dark and once again I've got a bit of a definite line there which you can see me trying hard to blend it in a bit there and the last color I was going to use was that indigo blue Sennelier pastel that I had but I forgot to bring it because I was out at my father's while I was doing this so I ended up using the ultramarine blue and it just wasn't dark enough so I really had to go over it with some of the black to make it a bit darker than that purple not the most ideal situation but sometimes you have to improvise with the supplies that you do have on hand now I'm going into the castle and this was a lot more precision work so I went in with my Prismacolor Premier coloured pencils I'm going over everything to begin with with an indigo so I had an indigo and a pencil but just not in the pastel which is slightly annoying never mind I just went over this castle this took me quite a long time so I'm not going to talk for the entire thing I'm just going to let you watch what I did basically I'm starting off the indigo to indicate the darkest shadows Now I've gone with Dahlia Purple. I decided I wanted to use a fairly limited colour palette for this picture, so I'm kind of using colours that match the background. And because I was doing a sunset in the background, I wanted the castle to reflect that by having similar colours 
to the sky to make it look like the light is setting on the castle. Although technically the light's behind the castle so the castle should be silhouetted but hey we have some artistic license here. It doesn't really matter does it? I don't think so. I wanted my castle to be colourful so that's what I did. Now just mentioning the background colours, in one of my very early videos, I think it's the second video I ever did, I did a painting with inks and the background is pretty much exactly the same set of colours that I used in this. So I definitely have a theme. I didn't even really think about that. It was subconscious and later on I realised that I'd done an identical background. So, oh well, I guess it's my thing. Okay, now I'm going in with yellowed orange. This is quite challenging because these colours don't sit next to each other on the colour wheel. They're actually opposing colours, being orange and purple. So the risk of them mixing together and turning into mud is very, very great. And I was trying very hard to colour only the white bits and not touch the purple too much. And then the last colour I used was canary yellow to tie it all in and pretend like the sun was hitting the castle. So that's what I did, although I did find that this one mixed in with the indigo quite a bit, so there are a few little greenish places here and there in the drawing. But otherwise I quite liked the colour combination. It was interesting using opposing colours rather than using colours that blend in together really easily. I like to challenge myself and I yeah thought this colour palette was quite nice. So I'm going back over again with indigo because some spots were not dark enough or they looked a bit too green so I was trying to take that out and I'm pretty much just tidying it all up and I usually do that with pencils. I tend to go back with ones that I've used previously to go over parts again and you can see me doing that with the yellow and the orange and then I decided that the rest of it which were sort of craggy rocks I thought I was going to do them a different colour but then I just decided no I'm just going to have everything the same. I just wanted to have that same limited colour palette that I had earlier and really I was struggling to think of another colour combination that would work with this one so stuff it I just went all the same and that's the choice that I stuck with. By the time I'd gotten onto the yellow, the whole thing looked pretty crazy, really busy. But I've committed now, and I do like the palette, so that's the main thing. <laughs> okay, now I decided that the moon thing here needed to be iridescent or shiny, so I pulled out some Sennelier iridescent oil pastels. It's a little set of six and I've had it laying around for ages and haven't really known what to do with it but I thought I would bust them out for this and it was an interesting experience because they're very thick and I'm trying to colour this really really fiddly detailed thing and it was a bit of a mission but I used a couple of cotton buds as you could see there to blend things in. I went in with a brassy colour first, or copper, and then I went over with a much yellower gold to try and get a little bit of highlight and shadow in there. Yeah, it wasn't very precise, but the cotton bud helped and it just blended things out a little bit. And you can see even on here just how iridescent and reflective and shiny it is, so that's what I was hoping for. It's probably not the most accurate thing in the world, and I did smear it a bit, but never mind. I then went in 
with some other color pencils some reds and I colored in the dragon up the top the reds were a little too close together in shade but I went over with the gold pastel just to add a little bit of shine onto them those Sennelier oil pastels are very very soft and that's almost like painting with lipstick it's quite a strange sensation and I'm not very good at controlling them yet but they were fun to use the other dragon I decided was going to be blue and I had a blue iridescent pastel so of course that had to be used in there and I'm just trying to blend it out a bit and I had a little silver as well then I got my new Montmartre oil pastels out because I haven't used them yet and I wanted to see how they were so I got a black and a few greys and they were really good as well I was pleasantly surprised at how high quality they are so I've just gone around with a few different shades of grey on those clouds it looks a bit messy here but I was intending to go over with a tissue after to blend them in so I had a bit of white there's my paper towel and I'm just rubbing the pastels to smear them and blend them in together not too bad my experience with oil pastels is very limited so I was experimenting on this coloring page and perhaps not all of it was as amazing as I'd like it to be but it turned out all right I had a lot of fun actually more than I thought with these oil pastels I didn't think I was really going to like them because they are quite messy and sticky on your hands but once you get the hang of using them and if you use things like cotton buds or q-tips if you prefer and paper towels it makes it a lot easier to blend them I got a bit scrubbly on this side I was kind of tired and I just wanted to finish the drawing so I got a little bit sloppy as you can see that side's not quite as precise and then I went around with the yellow pastel just to add a little bit of reflection from that sunset onto the clouds as well and tie it in with the whole piece I put a bit of orange on but it was a bit too much so I just didn't really bother doing too much of that one and then I went around with the white oil pastel just to add a few highlights to places and colored those tiny little pieces that I'd forgotten and that's pretty much the whole drawing I'm quite happy with it it's a nice mixed media piece rather than just doing pencils I found it a lot more fun actually then I sprayed the whole thing with fixative because those pastels were really sticky and that's the end of my coloring in for today so thank you very much for watching here's the final picture I will swatch you all again later have a wonderful day bye